What's going on guys? You're in with Hardy Tech. Welcome back to Pokemon Leaf Green, the egg lock run. In the last, I don't I have no clue what we did in the last episode. We probably killed something. Anyways, uh, after a bunch of grinding, and that was in the last video, which I told some story telling, we now have my current team, which consists of Nikestro, level 35, Jimmy, level 35, Moon, level 35, Beto, level 35. You should be able to see where this is going by now. Pretty much everybody's level 35, including this awesome Metang, who I recently got Shadow Ball for. As in, literally, like, two minutes ago, I went and got Shadow Ball for him, because it cost $90,000 to get that TM, but I think it was worth it, because now he's going to be destroying people. Anyways, today we are going to be taking on Silphco. I decided we're going to be doing Silphco before Koga and Sabrina, just to get some extra training in, since most of the Pokemon here, I think all the trainers are, like, their low 20s or mid 20s, so... This will be a good trace place to train up our Metang, and I'm hoping he can get to level 38 by the time we take on Koga, because when he gets to level 38, he learns Psychic. Speaking of Psychic, I got the TM from the dude in Saffron, and I taught it to um, Lapras. So, yeah. I'm going to be trying to get through Silphco somewhat fast, because I always get lost in here. I know the card key is on the fifth floor. Once I have the car key, I know exactly what to do on how to get to uh, Giovanni. It's more of getting to the card key that I can never actually remember. So I'm going to have a a bit of a problem that much. So, but I do know also that there's beds on the ninth floor. So I know most of the places I'm going. It's more of getting there that will make this situation rather difficult. Wow. Oh, I forgot to turn on um, <laughs> animations. I turned off animations when I was grinding to make it go faster, and very similar to what I did in my Fire Red Nuzlocke when I turned off animations and I forgot to turn it back on for the entire video, despite saying like every five minutes I'm going to turn it back on, I actually will turn it back on this time, because we will do it right after this battle, because the animations are what make Pokemon so amazing and so fascinating, and when you're grinding they're not really that special, but when you're taking on very important things like a, a, a juggler, because jugglers are important. When you're taking on a juggler, you want to have those battle animations because you want to see your Shadow Ball smacking him in the face and you just want to see those tears slowly just dripping down his face when he realizes that he is nothing more than a disappointment to everybody who's ever entered his family, ever met him, ever saw his face. He needs to realize he is just disappointing them. He is nothing but a sad, sad, sad man. Okay, so what am I supposed to do with a Metang? I've actually considered possibly getting Dig for Metang, because I'm pretty sure Metang can learn Dig and replacing um, Takedown, but I'm not 100% sure if he can... Wow, okay, Steel Resist Electric. Did not know that, and that did a lot of damage. Let's try Shadow Ball, will that do... Okay, yep, Steel, I always forget, just resists everything, so in that case, we can just switch it. Wow, Magnet Pool. Okay, yeah, that's cool. So, stupid Magneton is here trying to troll my Metang, who... Metang has become... I was not expecting this Beldum to be, like, so amazing, but I forgot to get Super Potions. I used every single one of my Super Potions while grinding, and now I'm starting to run kind of low. So, as in at a low... I'm kind of low, I mean I'm... I'm at a low. So... I think before we do anything else, we definitely need to go buy some healing items. Despite the fact that I only have like $2,000, because, like I said, I spent $90,000 grinding, or er, to get Shadow Ball. It's kind of a lot of money. For the record, if you guys are ever wanting to get items for or TMs, the best thing you can do is when you're grinding, put on the Amulet Coin. The Amulet Coin is so amazing because it doubles all the money you get, and it's very very useful because I would not have been able to get Shadow Ball. I literally only had like $92,000, so I came very, very close to not being able to get this wonderful, wonderful item, so I'm very grateful for that, and uh, for those of you curious about the EXP share, I did end up getting the EXP share. I did not actually have to catch any new Pokemon because what I did is I took all the voucher Pokemon, and I think I took two Weagle Pokemon, and I just rare candied them to get them to uh, evolve, and I think with Pikachu and Eevee, I just... I use stones, so. But so if you notice like a dramatic decrease in rare candies, that's why I didn't cheat or anything. Even though I just know, despite the fact that I have a video showing the grinding, there'll still be somebody that'll point out that I have rare candies and think that I cheated. Because some people on the internet are just that stupid. Gotta gotta love the stupid people. So no, I did not cheat. That is why I had like 350 rare candies before, and now I well I have. 
I think a little under 200. So no, I do not rare candy my Pokemon up. You could clearly tell that just by watching the last video, which I highly recommend you guys watch because I thought it was a very nice video. I talk about how I meet my best friend in the whole world, my, Miss Rustbutt the Deer, and I also tell some subscriber to stories and tell, including, for, what am I doing in the Pokemon Center? I don't, I don't know. Don't question what I'm doing. Just continue watching the video and ignore everything I say from now on. Seriously, if I ever say another word, you just you pretend I never said. You just move on with life. I do now not have words. Okay? Any noise that comes out of my mouth, it is not a real word. It is just it is part of a conspiracy to try to that, that's wrong, but it's part of a conspiracy to try to take over the internet. They are putting things into my mind. I don't have any say over what's going on. They just they have to accept the fact that they can't control me. I don't want hyper potions. I do I have to get hyper potions? I want super potions. Where can I get super potions from? I'm assuming Celadon has them. Is Celadon wouldn't even sell me uh, hyper potion or great super ultra balls. Yeah, those ones. So, uh, well, probably Lavender Town actually, because Lavender Town's relatively early in the game, so I'm sure they'd still have super potions instead of hyper potions. One thing that, like, always really annoyed me when I was younger was I would get, like, all seven gym badges and I'd make my way back to Viridian. And they'd still be, like, there selling derpy little potions. And you just, you can't do anything about it. You just have to accept the fact that you have to get potions. You, I wasn't smart enough to just fly to another town back then. So I was just, like, really upset with the fact that, hey, these guys are forcing me to use potions against Giovanni. To be fair, I never really exactly had trouble against Giovanni. I always kind of just wrecked him in battles but but still I didn't like the fact that I didn't even have a choice they didn't raise the items I want to think in the Hoenn games the items they sell depend on the amount of gym badges you have because I think once you have like once you get back to Norman the Pokemart there actually starts like selling higher um, higher items but I might be wrong that just might be horrible memory who knows I'm not very smart. When have I ever been smart? I don't think I've ever got to the Pokemon fact right in my entire life. So I do know that the car key, key card is on the fifth floor. I don't know how to get there. So pretty much whenever I take on Stealth Go, since I know exactly how to get to Giovanni once you have the card key, but I, I need the car key first, which usually proves to be quite a problem for me. I pretty much just step on every tile until I find something useful. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. okay. No, you can live it. You can. Wow, nice. Metang. This took an explosion. Only lost 27 HP. That's what I'm talking about. That is a good, good Metang right there. You have to respect that. Bite is. Oh, yeah, Bite's only neutral. That's right, because Steel resists everything for some reason. Except Ground of Fire, so. We're going to have to be very careful about that because if out of nowhere, just some random little Golbat's going to come along and flamethrower us. Nidoking. I think, Nid can't Nidoking actually learn like Fire Blast for reasons I don't understand? I try not to question Pokemon logic too much, but the fact that Gyarados can learn both Fire Blast and Thunder makes absolutely no sense. I know it's supposed to be like this gigantic super monster dragon thing, but it's a sea serpent that breathes fire and shoot and somehow shoots like electricity out of its body electricity which is its biggest weakness it somehow can store it inside its body and he utilizes it against other people really no really Pokemon really I'm not buying it I think there's some kind of conspiracy going on here I think secretly maybe Gyarados isn't even weak to electric maybe it's all just a ruse. Maybe that's just how it disguises itself from its true identity, of which it can't tell us what it is. But maybe everything I'm saying doesn't actually make sense. Maybe there's no real logic behind my own words and Pokemon actually makes complete sense. Yeah. Bet you never even considered that as an option, did you? You never even thought for a second that maybe Pokemon is actually the one correct thing in this world? That's how logic should work. And real world logic is actually the one that doesn't make sense. Maybe, just maybe, there is supposed to be little creatures living in grass that you can catch in balls. But our world is so messed up, and we're so anti-fun, that the, P the higher powers, they saw these monsters, and they're just like, No! That ain't happening! So they just 
They sprinkled little magic fairy dust into all the little grasses around the world, and they killed our Bulbasaurs, and they killed our Oddishes, and they just had to ruin all our fun. I just don't understand why they had to do that. I can't imagine that was necessary. And this met this Magnemite resists every single one of my moves, so I I have no clue what I'm supposed to do against it besides apparently die. So why 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 are my why why are my buttons not working? Uh, okay, this is weird. This is a new experience for me. Is it frozen? Maybe. Nope. Okay, what's going on? Um. One second. Okay, that was weird. I don't know what happened. I save state it and I restarted my emulator and it's working now. So that was an odd experience. Anyways, let's heal up our med thing. I think I actually wanted to go for a paralyzed heal and I just I got distracted and forgot what I was doing, so I super potion. But anyways, we because this stupid thing I can pretty much guarantee is gonna have magnet pool. I I Magnemite is apparently like the one counter to Metang is a Magnemite. And gotta say, did not okay, I can live a Sonic Boom at this level, so let's try confusion. As long as Spark doesn't crit, then we will be fine. Oh wow, that is way too close. How is a Magnemite doing this to a freaking Metang? It doesn't make sense. Either way, one more level, we're finally gonna get psychic, and then we will start destroying anything that tries getting in our way. In the meantime, let's definitely not use Metang because it's not looking too pretty out here to say the least. A, a Magnemite that's almost 10 levels lower got our super tanky Metang down to 9 HP. How often does that happen? I really need to consider putting Dig on him now because that's... We have like no counters to Magnemite. They, we just have to sit there and accept the fact that they're just going to ruin us. And for those of you curious, even though you could have seen me doing in the grinding montage, uh, Jimmy now has Flamethrower and I got that by spending $80,000 on a TM. So. Over the course of that grinding montage, I pretty much gar garnered about $200,000, which the amulet, without the amulet coin, I probably only would have been able to get one of these eight TMs instead of two. So I'm extremely grateful for that wonderful item. That's probably the second most useful item that Professor Oak gives you after the EXP share. I I seriously love it. So I wish we, I wish, kind of wish Metang had a recovery move. Uh, oh, speaking of amulet coin, we should probably put that on Metang since he's my battling guy, and I could definitely use some money now because I am uh, I'm broke. But once we get Metang to 38, I'll probably start training everybody else because I don't want one Pokemon to get too far ahead. And pretty much the only reason I'm using Metang right now is because once we get Psychic, I believe Koga is pretty much a guaranteed lock. I don't think his Weezing has Flamethrower or Fire Blast. I might be wrong. They might have those. I'm just saying, I don't think they do so assuming they don't his wheeze his wheezing will probably not even be able to touch Metang. he could just sit there and laugh and psychic off the days because i know that Metang can live an explosion because Metang has lived several explosions when we were taking on grinding there's that stupid level 33 wheezing like to grind and i know level 33 wheezing and a level 43 wheezing their damage is a little bit different but by that point, we'll be level 38 to level 39, and I think we'll have a decent shot at being able to take an explosion. And I just, I just, I'm really mostly confident. I do have, still have those fears about his uh, muck because Weezing, even though it's his most powerful Pokemon, is not really the Pokemon that matters at all. The Pokemon that you need to be scared of is definitely his muck. His muck will just absolutely make your life a living hell. If it gets off a Minimize or two, you're partially screwed already. Then if it starts Acid Armoring, you might as well just throw in the towel. Because there's like nothing you could do to that thing at that point. Besides just sit there and accept the beating you're about to take. So many nightmares I have of facing him with... Of course I was like a really derpy kid when I played it when I had uh, Venusaur. Of course when I used my Charizard, I just flamethrower with everything and just destroyed him. But when I played it with my Venusaur, I think I told the story before, but I just... I didn't know much about types at that point, so I was just kind of sitting there, razor leafing it, not understanding why it wasn't working. And I wasn't like even nearly as smart as I am now as Pokemon, which is really kind of pathetic because I'm still incredibly horrible at this game. But now, at least every time I use a Venusaur, I always have like Leech Seed and usually Poison Powder because if you combine both of those, and Venusaur just becomes like this huge stally tank, you just don't stand a chance against him a lot of the time. But 
back then I didn't know any better. And also, like, I would have, like, four moves of the same type out of Pokemon just because I thought that made it more powerful. Like, I think when I first played through Ruby and Sapphire, my Sceptile had four grass type moves. I think I had, like, Leaf Blade, I had Bullet Seed, uh, Giga Drain, and... Okay, maybe I had, like, one not grass type move. I think you probably had Quick Attack, but... Yeah, I, I wasn't exactly the smartest cookie in Pokemon back then. Now I've learned like the diversity of a, of a move set, how having four fire type moves on a fire type Pokemon probably isn't going to help you that much, surprisingly. I know, it's shocking, and oh, hey, we're, we're back here. Okay, that's cool. We are now on the 8th floor. Oh, do you do anything useful? Okay, nope, you're just a useless piece of... Oh, oh gotta, I gotta watch what I say. I gotta remember there's little kitties watching this video. So I gotta, I gotta make sure I don't say meanie words that might offend people. Okay, we now know this one over here takes us back to where we were before. So let's continue our journey through Silphco. We will be back on third floor once we finally find this card key, which probably is never gonna happen today. If it goes on too long, then I'll just like pause the video and go find it because it will seriously take me this entire video just to find this card key. I am that bad at these mazes. I. I've done this like so many times that I memorized how to get to Giovanni. It's like right here on the third floor. Finding this card key, remembering where these warp tiles go, it just my brain does not comprehend that. I I can't remember this stuff. And I it annoys me kinda like when people mock me because I can't remember this. Like how in the world are you supposed to remember this stuff? I mean ugh. The same thing for the most part happens in Ruby and Sapphire when you go into Team Aqua's base, like right outside of Lily Cove? I think it's Lily Cove. And you have that, that maze there with the tiles and everything. It's just like, oh my god, I hate warp tiles so much. I wish... I despise Giovanni. I don't know why, for some reason, every building he has has to have warp tiles. Actually, this isn't even his body. His building. He, did I say body earlier? This isn't even his building. He took it over. So now I'm really kind of starting to wonder why in the world is Silphco, a place that's supposed to manufacture, like, Pokemon goods. Why do they have warp tiles all over the place? What are they trying to hide? Where are they trying to get to so fast? What does this do to hide? Oh, 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 Pokeball. It's Pokeball. It's Focus Punch. Ooh. That's actually pretty interesting. I don't think I'll teach that to anybody, but um, I also don't remember where the substitute move tutor is. But that could be a very interesting combination. Oh, wait, no, that's where we came from. Okay, let's try going up this way, then. And are we... Wait, are we on third, third floor right now? Oh, my God, I hate this place so much. Oh, okay. Oh, I think I know where the car key is. I think I know where I'm going. I think my brain's starting to have one of those moments where it starts to click things together, and it's just like, Hardy, my God, you're not a huge waste of skin. You actually might do something right. And that makes me very happy. So hopefully with this trainer, we'll be able to get to level 38. We do have a rival battle to take on before Gary, which makes me a little nervous. So um, if, if, assuming I am about to find the car key, I will probably go to Celadon and get Dig and find out, well, I'll find out if I can teach Dig to him. Wow, really? It's like four XP off, that's nice. I'll probably find out if I can teach Dig to him. I, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be able to learn Dig. Like, how can he not dig into the ground? I guess because he's weak to ground, maybe, but I'm I'm sure he can. That would be very good. Anyways, I'll probably go get Dig, and then I'll heal up. And is the card key in here? No, wait, wait. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry. I'm just going to try to take... Wait, will you, wait, will you battle me, bitch? God damn it. Okay. That's okay. We're battling him. It's all good. Uh, as I've been trying to say like this entire video now, I will go to Celadon, I will get myself big because it's one of the wonderful moves that you can buy from the from the store. Then I will heal up and then we'll take on a rival battle. I'm a little worried about this rival battle because his um, Charizard is level 40, but I'm pretty sure Nekestro should be able to handle it. I think Nekestro will be able to live one move and then Rock Slide will one shot Charizard. Most likely, I don't see any time when Charizard would actually live a Rock Slide considering it's quad weak to it. Although, to be fair, in um, my Fire Red Nuzlocke, I had a Machoke who I had Rock Slide on. And I know Aerodactyl does get stabbed from Rock Slide, but I, my Machoke was like level 34 or 35, and it used Rock Slide on Charizard. 
The Charizard lived with like 1 HP and then it killed my matchup. And that made me so sad because I loved that matchup. That matchup was like my best friend and it just died right before my eyes. There was nothing I could do except sit there and watch it fall to the evil mastermind known as Blue. Actually, I don't. I think I named him. Um, I think I named him Tits in my Fire Red game. So nothing like losing a guy to a Pokemon named Tits. Although to be fair, a lot of men usually become very powerless when they're faced with Tits because they're they're kind of amazing creatures. Is this the card key? Please, please. Thank you. I was right. I remember the location. I feel so smart right now. Okay, now that we have this, we can get out of this stupid place. We can go to Celadon. And then we can go take on Blue and then Giovanni. And it's going to be a fantastic time because we're going to get the Master Ball. Super rich guy, owns this huge company, worth millions and millions of dollars. Can give us so many things. He can give us cars, he can give us money, he can give us whatever we want in the entire world. And he gives us one Pokeball. One Pokeball. Yeah. I think if you've read the Nuzlocke comics, that pretty much sums up how this works. It's just... You know, you, you're sitting there picturing, oh my god, I'm going to be sitting on a cruise, I'm going to be in a limo, I'm going to be swimming in money, and he's like, here's a Master Ball. He's like, what? But, but, what? No, no, just, no, I don't, I don't want this. Just, no, give, give me your money. Just, you should throw the Master Ball at him, because then he won't be able to escape. And then you just, you let him out, and now he's under your control, so you can force him to do whatever you want. Just force him to go get you, give you, like, whatever you want, give him, give you money, and all that. If you catch the guy, the Mr. President, just catch him instead, and all of a sudden you're living the fancy life. It's as simple as that. I don't know why nobody thinks of this. Anyways, here's Dig. You can buy it for 2,000 bucks. In the meantime, we also get some super potions, because now we have a lot more money than we did before, so... Yes, we can get super potions here. You beautiful, beautiful... Uh, I... Is that a... Is this a guy or a girl? I... I don't... I don't know. I've never actually even considered this before. I don't know if that is a, a female or a male, maybe a transgender. I don't judge. I fully support the LGBT community. I think they're amazing people. You can't learn dig. Are you serious? What? How do you not dig into the ground? You're, you literally have like little shovels on your fingers. Ah. All right, well, I guess we could teach it to Sipper. It could be useful on him for electric types, I suppose. Because it's not exactly like we're gonna be, well, Rock Team, I don't, I don't know. I guess, we'll just keep it for now. It's not exactly like it's we'd be wasting it because you could just buy it for $2,000, but eh, whatever. I'm thinking about possibly teaching Hyper Beam to Nido King over Mega Kick. I, though I'm not really sure because Hyper Beam is a lot more accurate. I think Hyper Beam is 95 or 90 percent accuracy, and wow, Mega Kick is like 75. And I believe they're the same power. I think they're both 120 base power. So I kind of have to decide whether I want a very inaccurate move or I want a move where it's almost guaranteed to hit, but I have to recharge for a turn. I don't know. It's hard to choose. I don't really know which would be better and which would be worse. So. I'll ask you guys for advice. What would you do? Would you rather have Mega Kick or would you rather go with um, the other move I, I can't think of? Hyper hyper something. Hyper Beam. Yeah. Alright, so this tile will take us into this room. And here is Gary just waiting for us. And I believe as always he's going to start off with his Pidgeotto. So we will start off with Beto. Because it's time to Beto something. We haven't bettoed anything since like the third gym. I don't even think we bettoed anything since when we took on... Um, Gary on the SSN so it's a good time to bring back the phrase Beto by Beto and Gary again oh yay good a vast pop up that's so useful I'm so glad my antivirus is up to date now nobody will ever hack me because I'm sure Vast does his job just fine good for you Vast. let's I'll give it a round of applause either way are we gonna be able to one shot this thing oh what what how do you live that is there even any HP left in that bar? That is... Wow, you would think a thing had a focus sash or something seeing that, but... Nope, I don't even think that existed in this game. Anyways, Execute is up next. We will go with... I really wish we had a Bug-type move. I also really wish there was any good Bug-type moves in this generation. But we will go with Jimmy, because a Fire-type will mess this guy up. 
And I don't understand why he waits until he's the Elite Four champion to evolve this thing. I mean, even like right before he takes on the Elite Four, he has this guy like level 50. It's just, why? Why do you not just throw a Leaf Stone at it? Just you just like grab a leaf. I mean, it probably won't know the difference. Alakazam. Um, normally, I probably would go with Jimmy for this, but I don't know. Alakazam kind of scares me. Because I know it can hit really hard with Psychic, and Wolf can resist Psychic, I think, twice. So, and he has Shadow Ball. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make the safe bet. I'm going to go with Metang, because I'm not feeling very confident about this. I have a very bad feeling this will end very badly. Let's go with Shadow Ball Calm Mind. Very glad I'm using a physical type move and not a special type move. I also think Alkazam's physical defense is worse than his special defense, so going with a physical move is a better idea. And I, it's all about the good ideas. All right, the moment of truth is Charizard. I believe this is the highest Pokemon we've taken on to date at level 40, and the Kester is only level 35, so I'm really scared. I don't know if we'll be able to live a flamethrower. I, pr I think his other moves are Wing Attack, Slash, and something else, but here we go, Rock Slide. Oh, wow, I did not expect to outspeed this. Okay, I didn't even consider the fact that I might outspeed him. Okay, yeah, nope, that's cool. Just one-shot him, like nobody, it's nobody's business. All right, that's awesome. <laughs> and a Gyarados. Oh, I forgot all about you. Do I have any, I don't have any Electric-type moves, do I? That's disappointing. Okay, we will go with... Um, God, I don't, I don't know. I didn't even, I didn't even consider Gyarados, so I wasn't really prepared for this. I think like is the only other type Gyarados weak to being uh, Rock type. I think, yeah, Flying cancels out the Water weakness or the Grass weakness, and Water cancels out the Ice weakness. So I think that's right. I think like the only other type Gyarados is actually weak to is. Rock type. Oh, yay! Another Avast pop up. Thank you so much for telling me. Wow, he lived that with so much. What? I forgot how bulky Gyarados is. That's right. Okay, Avast, do you want to maybe? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, another. Okay, let's just have everything pop up on the screen today. That's cool. I forgot that Gyaradoses are actually, like, really, actually kind of bulky, especially. So, they're not as bulky physically, so it'd be better off going with something like Shadow Ball. Which, for some reason, lowers his special defense. Don't question it, just go with it. Now, we're kind of in a tough predicament here because... Unless he goes for a move that does less than 18 damage, which it looks like he's actually doing. Okay, never mind. I was going to say we're in a kind of tough predicament because Dragon Rage is going to mess us over. But, nope, he's a stupid little Gyarados and we're going to live with 3 HP and kill the Gyarados. So, happy face. Awesome. And is that it? That is it. We defeated Rufus and I have a big happy face on, so... Well, howdy, I'm moving on and up in the head if I check my Pokedex. I don't, I don't care what you're saying. You can just walk away like the defeated loser you are, Mr. Brown Hair Insult Name here. Like, I'm not good at names. Anyways, I think that's going to do it for today because I had the idea that next time we'll be taking on three bosses, Giovanni, Koga, and probably Sabrina. So that should be a heck of an episode. It took us forever to get through Saf, Sif, whatever this place is. The big maze building, the maze of hell. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Until then, I'm Hardy Tech Yo-Yo.